Previously on Garage Made, wheels are removed from hubs and then axles were cut from hubs and axles were welded back again. This time on Garage Made, everything else. First up, get all the steel in from the trailer and figure out what we need to use. First up, we're cutting down these long frame rail pieces for each side of the trailer. I'm using the angle grinder here to ensure I have a very square cut so that I can create a very square frame. And these will be the end pieces for the frames. As my original design for the trailer was a beaver tail, the longest pieces were shorter than this current design. So when I cut the pieces down to fit them on my trailer to get them home, I cut some pieces too short. So here it's necessary to join these pieces together again. So now I'm grinding a good bevel to get a good penetrating weld to weld the two pieces together. I'm using some 100 by 100 mil box section to frame around the two pieces that I'm welding together to ensure that the sides are flat. Here I'm making up some fish plates out of 100 mil by 5 mil flat bar. The corners are cut off the fish plates to evenly distribute the stress along the box section. The fish plates are then clamped, tacked and fully welded in on the sides of the box section. Now I'm welding up the frames to make two frames that will support the car. First I tack it in the four corners and then fully weld it ensuring that it's square all the time that I'm welding. Here I'm adding the suspension support cross members. I'm marking on the trailer frame and on the support members so that I can remove them to clean up the steer ready for welding and put them back in exactly the right place. These support members are where the suspension shackles are attached to hang the leaf spring suspension. Now the suspension shackles get clamped, tacked and fully welded in place. Now it's time to attach the rear trailer cross member. This holds the tail lights, number plate and light assembly on the back of the trailer. This gets tack welded in place and then stitch welded across the bottom and then when the trailer's flipped over, stitch welded again across the top.
Here I'm installing the axles. These are placed on top of the leaf springs and attached using U-bolts. Now I'm cutting down some 100mm by 5mm plates to make some U-bolt plates. I'm going to sandwich together two plates to make it 10mm thick. After marking the holes, I drill a pilot hole through a few pieces of plate at a time and then widen the hole using a step drill up to the 12 millimeters of the U-bolt. Now the axles get hung using the U-bolts and the U-bolt plates I've just made. Now I'm making up the draw bars. The ends are cut at an angle to ensure that it has a nice welded surface to connect to the ends of the suspension shackle. Here I'm beveling the edge to then put a piece of 5mm by 50 by 100mm plate to box in the end to give it a bit of extra strength. The mill scale gets ground off the trailer frame where the draw bars will be attached and then the draw bars get carefully measured against the axles to ensure that they're square and true before welded in place. When welding the drawbar, you need to ensure that you fully weld the end of the drawbar, the plated end to the suspension shackle and the suspension support brace. It's also important when welding it to the frame of the trailer that you do not weld across the top of the drawbar as this may weaken the strength of the drawbar. Now to hook up the brakes. From the wrecker's yard, the brake cable, handbrake cable, is cut off quite close to the hub. So I'm using a shackle here to connect the brake cable to itself again and create a little loop which I can join the cables together with. Here I'm joining the brake hubs together in pairs. The front two are joined together and the rear two are joined together, as shown in the diagram with the red and the green lines. Now I'm joining together the front hubs and the rear hubs with the hitch and the handbrake, shown in the diagram by the blue line. Here I'm attaching the hitch. First I mark where the holes need to be, center punch them and then drill them out to a 12 millimeter hole. Now I'm cutting down the tread plates as shown in this diagram. Time to weld the tread plates in place. 
Each tread gets four tacks to hold it in place. Now it's time to make the mud guards. I'm using some fencing panels to make it out of. First, I'm cutting them down to size, making them a centimeter wider on each side so I can roll over a safe edge. Here I've clamped some box section to the steel to allow me to hammer over the edge to give a flange to start with and then fold it fully over to give me a safe edge. Now I'm cutting some reliefs in the steel so that the steel will fold and form the shape around the wheels. Time for the trailer wiring. The cheapest way to get lights on the back of the trailer is by using a light bar. I wanted to add some side markers to the trailer. I'm using some piggyback crimp connectors to connect the new side markers to the side lights of the light bar. Now the trailer is almost finished. Just to attach the mud guards, here I'm using a piece of 100mm box to space the mud guards above the tyres and then welding on a piece of steel and bolting the mud guards to the steel. Okay, thanks for watching. That's the trailer finished and as you can see I've already used it to pick up a future project. If you like what I did, hit the like button. We've got some interesting up and coming projects with CNC routes are gonna start next episode. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and take care of yourselves.